Hi, welcome to Waiter Nation. I'm Fagan. Today is Wednesday. A lot of times I talk about knowledge and waiter knowledge. Well, today we have a very knowledgeable professional waiter, Fabian. He speaks a few different languages. He's an expert in wine. So we're going to taste a little wine, a little something different, and we're going to have a conversation. Welcome, Fabian. Thank you for having me. Nice, nice of you to be here. Uh, where are you from, Fabian? Where did you grow I up? I am from Albania originally. Okay. But I lived in Italy for a few years and the rest of life in the United States. Nice. So in uh, Albania, is it like what I hear about Italy and France? You grew up with wine on the table all the time? or? Yeah, it's somewhat like that. Growing up in Albania, always wine was present. Okay. The quality of wine wasn't that good because everything was uh, controlled by the government. But always people were looking to find a good wine. So it was part of the culture. Where did you, when did you find your passion in wine? Is that Well, I would say more when I went to Italy. Okay. When I went to Italy, of course, my country was a communist country, was totally destroyed economically. There was nothing to do there, so I had to move. My aunt lived in Rome, so I moved to my aunt. I and was, lived in Rome? Yes. And I was trying to, to get a job yeah. somewhere to do anything to... To make a living, I found a job in the center of uh, Rome, uh, Piazza del Popolo, It's sure. uh, as a pizza man. I was making pizza. And uh, gradually, I tried to move. I liked to be a waiter because it was a better job sure. and it was a better money. So you waited tables in Rome? Yeah. First as a pizza that's, maker, and then you waited tables? Yeah, that's how I started. I, I was a waiter at this. It was called uh, uh, Trattoria del Tempo Perso. The Trattoria of Lost the Time, basically. Okay. When you went inside there, you time. You lost time, you relaxed. You. Yes. And we had, uh, that's where we start making a distinction of the good wines from, okay. the, from the table wine. So that was when it started to really get in the passion. So you brought a couple wines with you today. What's the first one we're going to taste? The first one we're going to taste is a Pinot Noir from Oregon. It's a Willamette Valley, and it's made from the same producer. It's a lady from uh, from uh, Burgundy originally, Veronique Drone. She oh, okay, makes the uh, domain Drone from Oregon. It's sure. very known. And uh, she makes this. It's relatively inexpensive. It's sixteen dollars at the liquor store but mm -hmm. it's good quality wine so a lot of people you mentioned burgundy a lot of people think either burgundy is a wine or a color <laughs> <laughs> but burgundy is actually a place in in france burgundy is yes? a region in, in france and they're famous where, for pinot noirs yes they make the best pinot noirs and the best uh, chardonnays that there are in the world how's oregon doing yes. now competing with burgundy is uh oregon it's the closest you can get to making a Pinot Noir Burgundy style. Because California makes nice Pinot Noirs, yes. they're a little bit too powerful. Okay. The, and Pinot Noir is very, very capricious grape. Doesn't grow in many places. Got to yeah. be perfect yeah. conditions to Delicate. So it's very hard to grow the Pinot Noir. That's why where you, Oregon was like one of the perfect places to grow it. And they, they're doing a great job. So let's taste. So what do you what do you do uh, oh, when customers come yeah. in? I mean, and some people feel self conscious. They don't want to act like a big shop, but they want to do the right thing. Yes, uh, there are two different. Like when you drink the wine, you cannot just swallow it. You have to taste it to appreciate yeah. it. And okay. the better the wine, the more. But the way that you taste the wine after it is poured to you, first you look at the color. Mm -hmm. It then you. You can shake it a little bit and you can smell it. When you shake it, the aromas come yeah. in your nose and you can determine what the aromas are and it's pleasant, what you, what you mm -hmm. get. On, and then you... You take the sip, you swirl it, swirl mm -hmm. it in your mouth a little bit and then you can... Get the aftertaste. Get the aftertaste and the... Finish. And then you make the judgment. You like the wine. Or, now, yes. it's fantastic. Maybe it's the time of day and I just yeah. have a little something to eat, <laughs> it but it's <was> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what I like doing, and I learned before, when you taste two wines next to each other, I, I really appreciate the difference. Yes. You know, and, I, and I remember, if I just tasted this or drank this bottle of wine today, I would, I would like it and enjoy it, but I don't remember it as much. That's just me. 
That's yeah. just how I learned, yeah. and that's that's how I do it. So, um, I know one thing in, in the dining room that you work with. Uh, your coworkers, you're really like a family. I follow most yeah. of you people, yes. you guys, and yes. um, you celebrate every birthday together. Yes, we you, do. You, yeah. you go out. You, you're really tight. Yeah. We it's nice like working a in a room like that. Every yeah. time somebody's birthday, yeah. normally is now the cat is out of the bag. Everybody knows, but yeah. we used to be a surprise. surprise party. <laughs> like, you want to come here? And then you get everybody. <laughs> and uh, normally the person doesn't pay. Like, first yeah. time they did it for me, I tried. I'm like, listen, I want to pay. Can't and pay. That's nice. It's nice yes. to belong to a room like that. Yes, it was, right? it's very nice. We are like family. We, yeah. I, I know it's it, it is a good room. So, the second wine we're going to taste is a little looks. I can tell it's darker right away, right? Yes, this is uh, what is called a super Toscan because super Toscan are made are called super Toscan. It's like marketing name basically. Okay. It doesn't exist as a classification super Toscan, but they were making wine outside of the regulation in mm -hmm. Tuscany because you could make either Br Brunello or Chianti. And uh, people wanted, the winemakers wanted to go outside of those boundaries and they tried to do wines that they, they like to do. So a blend? They, they, they did blend it. Like they used a lot of uh, international varieties that they weren't yeah. coming from the Tuscany. So they used a lot of uh, Cabernet, Merlot, and a lot of uh, Syrah, some Petit Verdot. Like a Bordeaux? Uh, yes, they Parado, tried to yeah. to get to the Bordeaux blend. Mm -hmm. It started with Sassicaia. They yeah. started fir first. They started just they made the wine for themselves. They kept it private for a while, but then the wine was so such a success that they decided into to market it to sell. To market it, and uh, Sassicaia was the first one who got the DOC. Okay, for, I didn't know that. Outside of the being a Brunello or a, or a Chianti. Well, let's taste. So th here, this is uh, is sixty percent Sangiovese, okay, thirty percent Cabernet Sauvignon, and ten percent of Syrah. So it has a nice, nice body, nice. Power. And this is what you would say: old world, new world would be Oregon. Old world, yes, would be, you, this, you know, yes. and you, you can this normally is, tell that just by yes, tasting, yes. right? You could tell. It. You can tell the tannins yeah. are much stronger, the body is stronger. The same, yeah, yeah. The alcohol is higher in this one. Mm -hmm. But like when I drink this one, I want a piece of meat with it. Exactly. <laughs> you, you need, you, right. Yes. This is not a cocktail wine. No. This is a big wine. Pinot you, Noir, you can drink it perfect. on its own all day long. This one, you have to have some food too. What do, uh, what's the, what do we do with a cork? Do we smell a cork? <laughs> well, the cork will smell like cork if you smell <laughs> yeah, okay. it. So I don't think you get much by the by the cork, the only thing you can get if the cork is all the way through wet, then yeah. mm. it may signal some kind of a. Yeah. But just a quick wine. glance is but, all. Yes. You look at it, cork I would, looks good, yeah. intact. I would good. just show the customer the cork, like, would you right. like to see it? And if he said no, I will take it off okay. the table. I wouldn't leave <clears> it on the table. Grew up in Albania, lived in Italy. Do you speak Italian? Yes. Of speak course. Albanian? Do you yeah. speak any in yeah. other languages? I, live, I speak few languages. Italian, a little bit better than English. Okay. <laughs> Albanian, and I speak some Spanish and some French. I study French in school, and but I never use it. So Okay. But, so it's still there, just in the back if, of your yeah, head. Yeah, but if I have to, I will uh, dig deep and get. <laughs> yeah, you, you can get by. I speak a little conversational Spanish myself. So, and that's what I talk about. You know, it takes a great deal of knowledge to be a waiter. Fabian's a great example of that. He went in detail about all the wines. That's more than most people can do. He speaks five languages. And that's what we do here on Waiter Nation. We showcase talent. Thank you for being here, Fabian. Thank you for having me. You know, I want to remind everybody, uh, I was talking to two young waiters. This Saturday night, if you're tying on an apron, you're at pre-shift, you're at uh, lineup, you got a pocket full of pens, you got an order pad in your back pocket, so are we, so is Fabian, so am I. We're there every week Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. We are knowledgeable. You want to say we are a nation? We are a waiter nation. Salute. Salute. We are changing everything you think a waiter is one story at a time. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next Wednesday.